Monday, 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 Monday. <laughs> Hopefully this is going to be a great start to your week. Um, I'm hoping that it's going to be a great start to my week as well. I feel like I have 18,000 million things going on and I just need to bring it all <laughs> together. Um, but a couple of things. So I'm doing my IVF vlogs, which you guys know about because we're in the process of doing IVF. And my intent is to literally share everything that goes on in regards to it and everything that you do i guess because some parts you get some of the ivf story but you don't get some of the ivf story i, I don't know but the moral of the story is i plan to share to share i plan to share uh, the entire journey of everything that happens from start to finish and break it up into different segments i have decided that i'm going to keep with my monday vlogs until it becomes where I'm having a lot more to do or more to say and things pick up pretty much. And the reason being is because I'm doing a frozen embryo transfer, which you guys will know already by now. And that's because we are doing the IVF with the PGD testing and we won't be able to transfer back in the same cycle. So theoretically, um, for a large chunk of time, I just would have nothing to post, but I would like to keep something to be able to post during that time so it makes more sense for me to just break it up and put it on the Mondays versus just doing everything at one time, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Monday, Wednesday, that would just be too much. But anyway, welcome, welcome, welcome to all of my new subscribers. Thank you very much for choosing to subscribe to this wonderful journey of mine. Uh, so last week when we discussed this, I was talking to you about the potential of changing my center that I chose to do IVF in. And now, that was really a big deal, and I could tell you for sure that we definitely have finalized and made a decision. It was good for us to be able to see both sides. So if you did not see last week's video, then I'm going to go ahead and post it somewhere up in here so you can take a look at it, because I don't want to be in the habit of repeating exactly what happened in the last video. I prefer for everybody to just look at it, and then when you come, you kind of understand exactly what it is I'm talking about and where I'm coming from. So let's just jump right into it. So the very next day, I ended up going to the new fertility center, and I wanted to give it a little time before I actually decided to come here and tell you what it is that I feel about it or felt about it and to really get a true opinion of them and what it is that they do because I feel like if you go to something and you see it once you don't really get a good feel for it especially depending on what your issue is so basically my issue with the other center and I'm just going to refer to it as two centers because I intend to share with you what these two centers are at the end of my whole IVF process but I won't be sharing them during this time um, but my problem with the first center was the lack of communication once it was time for us to start with IVF. Like I said in the previous video, I absolutely love my RE. She was absolutely wonderful. And when you start doing IVF, you have so many different parts to it that you kind of need everyone to be communicating, not only communicating with you, but also communicating amongst each other, or else it's really just not going to work out. And so I was saddened to have to go look at another center because I really did enjoy my doctor, but the people that worked with her or were supposed to be working hand in hand with her to make sure that everything was going together, they were just not very organized at all. So my husband and I got up bright and early and went to the new facility center and just aesthetically, if we just talk aesthetics, you know, walking in and sitting down, it was like, okay, this is a really nice place it's really nice it's really serene it's really tranquil you know the waiting really like the waiting area was really peaceful and it just gave you kind of a peaceful feeling i don't know how to explain it but other than saying tranquil and peaceful it gave you more of a peaceful feeling so from the looks of it it looked great everything was well kept up um 
yeah we'll just say that god i don't want to give too many details but everything was well kept and i thought okay this is good so we came in we filled out our paperwork and then as soon as they were done with the paperwork they were like okay let's go to the back and meet with the doctor so i went in i gave my history to the nurse which is pretty much my fertility history that's usually what they ask you um how old you are um how many pregnancies you've had if you had pregnancies did they come to term all sorts of things all sorts of things about your medical history about your trying history about your sexual history all that stuff so then we went to the back and we sat in the doctor's office and we walked in we we're like oh this is really this is interesting it was very vibrant is what i'm gonna say it was very vibrant and it kind of gave you one of those like really happy feelings when you walked into her office just sitting there so we were sitting there before she had come in so it kind of gave us a little bit of time to talk about how we felt so far and at that point we felt like okay this is going pretty good everything seems to be working seamlessly i didn't have to have an excessively long wait time and i like this so she finally came into the room and she welcomed us, she welcomed us and she talked about how honored she was to have us here and to potentially be looking into their facility to choose to do such, you know, like a monumental thing and our TTC journey and so on and so forth. And then we started talking and getting to the nitty gritty of things. And that's what really matters to me outside of aesthetics and all the rest of the other stuff. Because you guys know that I've been doing this whole TTC thing for a long time. And so I know a tremendous amount about it. And I feel like if I'm going to go to you, I need to be learning something and I don't want to be telling you everything that you should know or be telling me. And so I will say hands down in terms of fertility centers, that was the longest doctor's appointment I've ever had. As in just sitting there and us just talking about my particular history and her particular facility and how all this works together, the absolute longest. Like, it was to the point where I was just like, okay, hmm, all right, I think, I think, I think I got it. Totally think I got it. And usually I don't feel like that because in most cases when you go to a fertility center, you're working within a certain time frame and you you know you don't want to feel rushed but you also know that the doctors also have things that they have to do but when i tell you she sat and answered every single question that we had every single question that we had and then some and she wrote it down and when we were done we were able to take a look at what it was that she wrote down to look back at and see we spoke a lot about what I wanted in terms of communication from any place that I was going to choose. Um, so I talked in great detail about my expectation for communication throughout this entire process, you know, because I feel like I don't want to have to run after you or chase after you to give you my money or to get my insurance company to pay something out to you. Like, I shouldn't have to be running after you, period. <laughs> And so that went well, and in that conversation, she made it seem like everything was going to be wonderful. If you need to call me, you can call me. I can speak to you. If you have any questions, here's my card, here's my email. You can email me directly, and I answer all my emails. I don't have anybody else do that. I will respond to you and get back to you and all that good stuff. So all of it sounded very good, but I'm very cautiously optimistic about things that sound great because I need for it to do much. I took her at her word at what she was saying, but I plan to test that out because you know, when you go to fertility centers and you talk to doctors, in most cases, you're in communication with someone and their staff, talking to their nurse or something like that. And I'm like, okay, she heard what I said. And she then told me that we would have great communication over this process. I can email her. She's going to respond. I can call her on the phone. We're going to see what happens because it sounds great, but I really need to see about this. So after I came out the office of talking with her, then we ended up going into the finance office, which is something that you do in the beginning. And we discussed my insurance and what my insurance pays and what the breakdown would be and all sorts of stuff. And that was great because one of the problems that I was having with the other facility is that they were trying to tell me that they 
they just couldn't get in contact with them in order to be able to find out what kind of insurance I have. But meanwhile, they give me a whole printout of who they spoke to, what the customer service representative name was, ID number, and all sorts of stuff on a very long PDF on what my insurance is, what my insurance covers, what their fees are, what our financial contribution would be after their fees to us. And so that was great because it was there plain as day, nice and writing, this is how much it costs, this is how much your insurance will pay, and this is how much you will pay in the event that you choose to go down the route of IVF with us. My only problem with it in reference to the finance part and talking about um, the genetics part of this, because obviously we plan to do PGD testing, is that they work exclusively with one lab and one lab only. And so I don't know how I feel about that. I feel like I want to have a choice. Like I need to have a choice in the lab that I, ch that I choose to send my embryos to. And if I don't have this choice, then I personally need to vet this particular company because I want to know that this is the best place for them to be going. But I'm going to talk to you about that later. So we went there. We got the breakdown. Wonderful. Great. Awesome. After that, one of the things we had talked about with the doctor was an ultrasound. An ultrasound specifically to count my follicles at that time, um, just based off of the potential of starting IVF there and trying to get an idea on where my levels were and all sorts of stuff. And she said if I wanted to do the ultrasound, then I could, but if I didn't and I wanted to wait until I made a final decision, then that would be fine. So I said, okay, well, I have no problem doing the ultrasound because I am interested in my follicle count at this particular time. And what she was explaining was that she was just trying to see um, if I had a normal amount of follicles because they have a range of normal or if I had an amount of follicles that would be considered polycystic. So you can have a normal range of follicles, which is between, you know, like one and nine or something, depending on what's happening on each side, left and right ovary. And then if it's above nine, between 10 and above, then those would be considered, considered polycystic ovaries. But you don't want to confuse polycystic ovaries with PCOS or polycystic ovarian syndrome, because you can have polycystic ovaries and not have PCOS. Um, but basically, we were just literally checking to find out the, num the number of follicles that I had at that time. And at that time, on my left side, I had 11, and on my right side, I had 15. So that put me into the category of having what they consider to be polycystic ovaries. And the reason why she was checking that was because she just wanted to get an idea on one, the amount of follicles, and two, I guess which area she might be going in reference to stimulation and things like that. Because she said that if you have a higher amount of follicles, you have a higher chance of OHSS, which is ovarian hyperstimulation, and they would really want to try to avoid that. So they usually like to check before time so that they can figure out where it is that they're going. Blah, 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 blah. I know y'all are like, okay. Um, so we ended up doing that. And after that, we finished with the appointment. Um, we left, went, had lunch with my husband, we discussed everything to kind of get an idea on how we felt about the doctor, how we felt about the finance department, how we felt about the sonographer, how we felt about the nurse at that time, just everything about the flow of it and all sorts of things. And when we talked about it, we had a great time. It was absolutely outstanding. Um, and so from, for, from face value, it looked like, okay, this is going to be a great place for us to go and for us to move to in reference to IVF. They seem to be very serious about this. They're about their business. We're about our business. We want everything to go well. Um, but the big factor is the communication. So shortly after leaving there, um, I had told the doctor that I would send her the files that I did have from my previous RE from here and also when I lived in New Jersey. And so that, I want to say that Monday, because we went on a, we went, I don't really do but on that Monday, I went and I wrote out an email to the doctor and I gave her the, the files from my fertility center and then just kind of thanked her for meeting us 
Um, and then further talked about the different things that were throughout my paperwork and if there was anything that she needed to be done or anything. And really, this was just a test email. It literally was just a test email. I'm picking up my phone for a second so that I can see if I can show you visually the response that I ended up getting without having to show you, you know, like all the business. <laughs> so hold on a second. But what I will say is, she responded back the very next day and she told me that she was sending me this email just to acknowledge the fact that she did receive the email. She didn't want me to feel like she had saw the email and just didn't respond and stuff like that, but that she will be in communication with me shortly after going through the files that I sent over to her from my particular uh, fertility office. And let me see if I can just pull it up. Here it is, let's see. I'll try to talk and do this at the same time. Um, but anyway, when I tell you, when she finally did respond to the email, this email was so long and I was absolutely amazed. It was very long and it was very detailed and I could tell that, <laughs> excuse me, I could tell that she spent the time to actually read through my entire history, look closely at all of the test results that I had, ask questions about those test results if she did, make suggestions about other things. Like she really went through and responded. And responded not to someone else, but responded herself. And she responded so well that me and my husband looking at each other like, I'm amazed. So I said, okay. Oh, why is this giving me this? That's not correct. At that point, we waited. Because she responded to me. I responded to her, to the email that she sent, just in, uh, answering her questions. And then I said, okay, I'm going to see about their response time, about their call response time, about if I call, am I going to get an answer? Am I going to have to wait for somebody? Am I going to be sent a voicemail? Are you going to tell me you're going to call me back three days later? Like how this is going to work? So I call. When I call, I get a human being, a person that wants to talk to me on the phone. If I leave a message, I leave a message. I get a call back before the end of the day. And I can't even say leave a message because I never actually went to someone's voicemail. I they talk to you on the phone. Oh, is there anything that I can help you with? Or do you need this specific person? If you need this specific person, don't you worry. She's on the floor right now working, but I will have her come back and, and speak to you before the end of the day, around this time and this time. And lo and behold, when they say between this time and this time during the day that this person's gonna call you back, they're going to call you back. I've received plenty of calls from that particular doctor's office. Let me see if I got it back. Yeah, plenty of calls from the doctor's office. And so I'm like, okay, their communication is definitely on point. So an extra check and an extra star, star, star here. In the meantime, in between time, I was supposed to be waiting for a response from the previous center. In the previous center, the last thing we talked about was the lady in the finance office who was trying to tell me that she had to wait to find out um, about my insurance information because she hasn't spoken to anybody and so on and so forth. Days go by after the day that she told me to call back. So I call back because, you know, she never called me back. She said, oh, if I don't call you back by this day, then give me a call back. I didn't call back. And I waited to see if I would get a response from her. Never got a response from her. I call, I speak to her, she said, oh, yeah, you're right. Um, you know what, I'm gonna call you back in 15 minutes because you know I gotta get my system together and this and this and this and this. And this. Now meanwhile, this is way after the time she's supposed to call me back. Tell me she's gonna call me back in 15 minutes. So I'm like, okay, I'm home, no biggie. Hours go by, this woman never calls me back. She sends me a response on the portal. I didn't even know she had access to the hospital, like to the um, patient portal. She responds all the portal like, oh, sorry, I didn't get a chance to call you back, but you know, I just want you to know, such and such. But the moral of the story was, she still didn't have any of the information. Second thing, I got that um, like envelope folder from the center with the IVF from the IVF coordinator. And in it, it had a note. And in the note it says, 
oh well please give me a call if I haven't called you yet about receiving this item. I never got a call back from the IVF coordinator. To this day, I never heard from her again. Not a check in to see, hey, so is everything good? Are you still planning on working with us? What you doing? How's things going? Not, nothing, not a, not a, not a thing. So that made our decision pretty easy. So we did officially decide to go with the newer center versus the older center and we're very happy and we're very pleased with them thus far and i don't see myself becoming disappointed in them now never say never because <laughs> this is a crazy journey and five videos from now i could be telling you this was a hot mess but as of right now we are very excited about just being able to move forward being confident in moving forward um and being confident in the team that they have at this particular place. And so I think I finally pulled up that email. And it's on my phone, so you may not be able to see like thing. I don't know if it'll focus, but we're gonna um, go over here because you don't need to see like all the information, but you see the words. And in the words, you just keep going and going and going and going, okay? So we get all the way to the bottom. I was absolutely surprised. Um, but anyway, so let's just delve into a little bit of conversation about how about this? For everyone who was interested in what the decision was in regards to the center that we chose, then that is the answer. We decided to go with the new center. We're very excited about that. So that would end this portion of this video, which is what today's video is supposed to be about. But I do want to talk about something else. And so if you would like to stay longer for a longer portion of this video, we're going to, we're going to call this the, um, what do they do on um, shows and stuff when they come back later, the after hour or the nightcap. Except it's not nighttime. <laughs> Except it's not nighttime. So I don't know. We're gonna call it the the nightcap, the after cap, the after the videos over section. So if you want to watch that part, then come on over. 